Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and I hope that you are looking forward to spending some serious time with me today. Snuggle up, grab a glass of wine, let's hang out because we're gonna be talking about all of my eyeshadows in my collection that have pan on them. This is going to be quite extensive. I have a lot of pans in my eyeshadow collection. Most of my palettes are three, four, five years old. And so I've had a lot of time to spend with them and play with them. I've also been working on my Pan Those Eyeshadows Project Pan for now three full years and I'm in my fourth year of this project. So I have been hyper focusing on getting use out of my eyeshadow collection for quite some time. We're gonna be talking about some singles. We're gonna be talking about some palettes, discontinued and otherwise, so things that are still available. And I'm just so excited to share with you some pan porn because I personally love, love, love seeing pans in all makeup, but especially eyeshadow, there's something so satisfying about that. I just love feeling motivated and excited to jump into my own collection and do the same. So I'm hoping that does that for some of you. And yeah, why don't we just hop right on into it before the rambles take hold too much. So let's get on into all of my eyeshadows with pan in them. I am not going in any particular order. I'm just gonna grab what I see because I have all my palettes laid out in front of me and I just want to delve into them. So let's just get right on into it. The first palette I have in front of me is my Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture Palette. This is a very polarizing palette, but I have had this since it very first launched on the ABH website. I didn't even wait for it to come to Sephora. I needed it immediately. And I don't believe that this is available anymore. However, you can find it sometimes at places like TJ Maxx in the States, but here um, in, the, in Canada, you can find it at like Marshalls and Winners, I believe. So it still is, you know, available in some capacity, but that's not even the point of today's video. The point is the pans and this palette has plenty of them. So I have pan in the shade Dawn, which is like a light creamy beige kind of color. I also have pan in mercury, which is a purple pulling kind of gray tone. I have pan in Roxy, which is an orange kind of coral and then electric, which is a beautiful shifty duochrome of gold and green new wave, which is like a kind of mac and cheese kind of orange untamed, which is a beautiful earthy green color and edge, which is a beautiful matte mustard. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pans in here collectively. This is a eyeshadow palette that most of these pans I did manage to hit through my Pan Those Eyeshadows project, so I definitely have that project to thank for how well loved this palette looks, but it is definitely a staple in my collection. I adore all of these really rich jewel toned matte colors. They're so grungy and so impactful. It is definitely a little bit of a challenging kind of formulation, but it is one that when I open up this palette, I feel really inspired, excited, and I really want to play with makeup when I see this. It is really cool to look at this palette and see that half of the eyeshadows in here do have pan in them. So that is really, really cool. And we may as well talk about my other ABH palette. This is the ABH Modern Renaissance. I have had this palette for absolutely eons. We're approaching five years together, me and this palette, and it looks definitely as though that is the case. So I have plenty of pans in this palette as well. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just over half of the pans, more of the lighter tones, more of the more wearable versus the colorful shades in here have pan in them. So I have pan in Tempera, which is like a satin cream color. Golden Ochre, which is kind of like a uh, very light mustard beigey kind of color. And then I also have Pan in Vermeer, which is a shimmery light pink. Bon Fresco, this is the largest, one of the largest pans I have in this palette. And it's such a unique shade to this palette specifically. It's like a dusty light mauvey purple. And then I have Pan in Rossiana, which is a Kind of just light mid-tone brown um, burnt orange which is the sister to raw sienna just slightly more of an orange tone versus neutral primavera which is a beautiful golden highlight shade it is absolutely stunning and then warm taupe which is perfectly summed up in its name actually it is a warm taupey kind of shade 
I am very close to pan on a couple of the other shades in this palette as well. Cypress Umber, which is that gorgeous chocolate brown. And Antique Bronze, I'm honestly shocked that I don't yet have pan on it. That is something I'm sure in time I'll be able to hit pan on in no problem because I do think that's such a beautiful one and done grungy kind of shade. The fact that this palette has eight pans in it is very, very satisfying. I did pick this up after some of the like initial hype had subsided for this palette, but it still was a absolute staple for many people, even when I picked it up. And it became a staple for me very quickly. It was one that I often traveled with. Not so much these days because I don't really travel. That's probably the reason why but it was definitely a go-to palette for me for such a long time and you can see that for sure through all of these pans and in due time I do think that I'd be able to hit pan on some of the remaining shades. I think the pinks and the reds they're just not my personal preference so they probably would never have pan on them but I guess you can never say never, right? Next up, let's talk about my baby here. This is the Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette. We know the color story in this palette is just like, it feels like it's made for me. Every time I look at this palette, I am so excited and so inspired. And it's shocking to say I only have one pan in this palette and that is in the shade Gemini. It is one of the two metallics in this palette. It is like a flaky, light, coppery kind of shade with a more orange than a red base. Beautiful color, really easy to pair with many, many looks, but I'm shocked to see that this palette looks so underused, even though I use it a lot. I still frequently reach for it, even though it's not a part of my pan, those eyeshadows at the moment, but these mattes are just so extremely pigmented that you have to just dip your brush in very, very lightly, and it takes no product whatsoever to create an impactful, beautiful look. So that's why the rest of the palette just doesn't seem as loved as this one shade. So I would definitely love to remedy that in the very near future. This is a really good reminder that I should just be pulling for this palette as often as I can and want to because it's such a favorite formula and color story of mine. I love it so much. I, I cannot say enough good things about that palette. And then the Urban Decay Born to Run is the next palette that's here right in front of me. So let's chat about it. This palette has been in many rounds of my Pan Those Eyeshadows Project Pans. Sometimes it overstayed its welcome. I like this palette, but I don't love it. And yet it has just been something that is continuously getting pulled into that Project Pan, which is why it looks so well loved. There's many pans in here thanks to that Project Pan. And I am happy to see that because if it hadn't been pulled into my pan, those eyeshadows many times, but now that I'm looking at this with like fresh eyes, I haven't used this palette in a while. I'm feeling really excited by it again. And especially because of the just vast amount of pans that I have in here. So let's chat about those dang pans. Why don't we? So the first one I have here is in the shade breakaway. I should probably just move over. What am I doing? So this first shade is called Breakaway. This is a beautiful, light, creamy, satin kind of formula. This is a great brow bone and inner corner highlight for a very soft look. Stranded is this stunning golden shade. It's kind of a dirty gold, um, a little bit more of a neutral kind of leaning orangey gold versus like a green gold or a yellow gold. And then Weekender here is a beautiful beigey kind of color. I'm surprised I don't have pan in more of these mattes here because I do reach for them very often when I'm focusing on some of the metallics in this palette. But then the next one I have here is Ignite, which is a stunning copper shade, such a beautiful true copper color. And then Wanderlust here also is a beautiful metallic. It is a dirty kind of money green kind of color. It is really pretty, um, definitely more of a grungy kind of color, which is my vibe entirely. And then Drift right here, you can hardly see the pan in Drift, but that is such a unique and beautiful gray color that has a little bit of kind of gunmetal, a little bit of purple. It's really dynamic and a very interesting shade. So collectively I have one, two, three, four, five, six pans in here, which is really quite special and stellar and I'm really happy to see all of those pans in this palette. I'd love to expand the amount of pans in here and I foresee that being 
no problem. I know this will get rolled into my Canva's eyeshadows very soon. It always somehow manages to make its way into that project. Now the next palette I wanna chat about is the Magic Mini by Juvia's Place. This is actually my newest Juvia's Place palette. I have had it since 2020, and I believe it was like April or May when I purchased it, but I actually only have one pan in it, which is all right. I'm, I'm pretty happy to see one pan in here. The rest of this palette does look really well loved. There's dips in a wide variety of shades in here, but I particularly have pan in the shade called Oshun, which is a stunning light pink shimmer. It's a really dynamic color as much as it looks like such a basic shade in the pan. It has like this silvery kind of undertone to it that just really reflects the light in such a beautiful way. The metallics in this palette are absolutely beautiful and Oshun is definitely no exception to that. I would love to see more pans in this palette for sure, seeing as it is a part of my collection and I am really happy with the formulas. If I were, you know, in the mood to purchase more eyeshadows, I probably wouldn't be purchasing from Juvia's Place, at least for the immediate future, just because of a little bit of drama that has unfolded recently, but I, that is not the point of today's video. I'm just showing off the pants and palettes that I do have. And then the next palette here, this is such a stunning palette, and I think this is discontinued. I don't know why, I think I just like block that from my memory, um, but I do believe this is actually a discontinued palette, which is so saddening because this is a stunner. This is the Nabla Soul Blooming palette. And I feel like it would be truly something that would be the top of the trend right now, just given the color of the year is very peri, but it also has those elements of neutrals that really ground those purples in here as well. This is a palette that I did receive from my friend Alexi as a birthday gift many years ago when it was available. And I'm so grateful for that because I don't think I would have picked this up on my own. I wouldn't have thought that I'd be into these kinds of tones, but it is such a beautiful palette, amazing formula as well. And I have three pans in here, like a game of X's and O's, they're all in a row there. I could foresee myself being able to hit more pans in this palette for sure. And I definitely will in time, but for the time being, I'm happy to see that a quarter of this palette has pan. So the pans I have are the shade Gia. This is a stunning, really unique kind of rosy brown shade. It's extremely unique as a crease color. I don't have anything else quite like it in my collection because it looks like a brown, but it has this rosy, pinky, almost slightly corally kind of tone to it that just brings a lot of life to any look. I also have Pan in Garden Gate, which is a beautiful duochrome. It's purple and it's blue and it's mesmerizing and it's just unreal. And then I also have Pan in the shade Flowery, which is that periwinkle gorgeous color right there. Like this matte formula is unreal. I would definitely be interested in trying more Nabla palettes because of this. But at this moment, I just don't feel the compelled to really bring any into my collection as a whole, but Nabla would be probably one of those brands at the top of my list to bring more palettes into my collection because these have just wowed me. They've wowed me so much. Next up is another palette that my friend Alexi sent me for my birthday a few years back. This is the Sleek Makeup Eye Divine Storm Palette. This is a palette that I've had in my pan those eyeshadows a handful of times as well. It's one that I don't often reach for outside of that project, but I really do like the formula from the experiences that I've had with it. It has this little like clear sheet that has the shadow names on it and I'm surprised this has survived with me this long, but I still have it even though it's been I think like three years of owning this palette. But I do need to refer to this to talk about the pans I have. So I have three pans in this palette. They are all in metallic shades. This first one right here is called Snowstorm. It is a kind of light shimmering champagne kind of shade. And then I have Pan in this beautiful bronzy kind of pink tone. It's not rose gold, it's not gold by any means, but it has this slightly bronzy kind of um, aura to it. You know what I mean? And that is called Perfect Storm. It's a beautiful, beautiful lid shade. 
And then this one right here is called Gathering Storm. It is a gunmetal shade that leans more on the blue side. And this one is very much a steel blue kind of shade. This palette is all around a very fun kind of grungy palette for me. I love these grungy tones, but they're metallic. So they just have something a little bit more interesting and exciting to them. This would actually be an amazing palette to pair with the Subculture palette. I'm just thinking that now because that is so matte heavy. This would pair really well with it to give it more of those earthy vibes, but um, in some metallic finishes. I need to reach for this more for sure, but I'm happy to see that I have three pans in here anyways. Let's mix it up and move into my Super Shock shadows that have pan in them. I used to have a large collection of Super Shock shadows, and now I think I have about five or maybe six of them but these three have pan in them. So the first one is one that you've seen many times on my channel. This is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Telepathy. This is a gorgeous greeny gold kind of color, really dirty gold, very grungy, very earthy, and yet still bright and metallic. This is one of my favorite eyeshadows, I think still in my collection because it's very unique. This was a collaboration with Kathleen Lights and it's no longer available, it has not been for a long time. But mine still feels really creamy and I still find myself reaching for it very often because it is quite unique to my collection. This next one is, uh, it's seen better days for sure, but I've been kind of trying to finish it off so, Please bear with me when you see what this looks like, but this is the Super Shock Shadow in the shade La La. This is one that has made its way onto my channel many times and I've been trying to finish it off. So there's barely any product remaining in here, but I had hit pan on it many, many years ago. So I had to talk about it today. It's a stunning rose gold meets copper kind of shade. I can't describe it as just rose gold and I can't describe it as just copper. It feels wrong to say it's one or the other because it kind of is right in the middle of those two. I can sometimes see this more pinky kind of red sort of tone to it. And then other times it definitely reads as more orangey brown. We know I love this color so much. It's just so effortless, easy to throw onto the eyes and just wear as a one and done shade or in combination with literally any matte in the crease. And I'm hoping I can finish it by the end of this year. I don't currently have it in a project pan, but I've been kind of trying to work on it independently. And then the last Super Shock Shadow I have here was a limited edition one. This is in the shade Birthday Cake. This was from ColourPop's third birthday, so you know it's hella old, but it's a gorgeous pink kind of shade. It has a silvery kind of undertone, but then it also has this base pigment that is almost a little bit brownie, like a warm brown. This is a good reminder that I need to reach for this more often because this will eventually dry out on me and it has not been utilized to the extent that it should be. So this is a very good reminder for me. But that's all that I have for Super Shock Shadows with pan in them. Over the course of the last few years, I have worked my way through a couple of my Super Shock Shadows, but I've also decluttered many of them because once you hit pan on them, sometimes they seem to change formula. But those three are tried and true ones that I've had for years and I still love on them. Next up, let's talk about my Fenty Beauty Galaxy palette. This is a discontinued palette. I actually, was it just limited edition? I think it might've been the holiday palette for the year that Fenty came out. So that would have been 2018 maybe something like that. This palette is so stunning and it's also so dang reflective and really annoying to show on camera, but I think it was really ahead of its time. This is an all metallic palette and the shades in here are just so stunning. I wish that Fenty was still offering something kind of comparable to this because these shimmers are out of this world. They're so dimensional. They have so much depth and texture to them. But I have three pans in this palette, which is fabulous. I have pan on this shade right here, and it is called Planet X, which is a beautiful, warm, chocolatey brown kind of shade, but it has so much unique dimension to it. It reads on the lids as very wet and very dimensional, really beautiful. And then this one right here is called Milky Way. I'd say this is one of the least textured shades in this palette. It really is more of a refined metallic, but it's a beautiful creamy kind of shade. I'm gonna say beautiful a lot and I probably already have. I just caught myself like saying it twice back to back, but 
It is a creamy kind of color, really great to wear as an inner corner highlight, or sometimes I can even wear it on the face as a highlight. And lastly, I have pan in this purple shade right here called Space Out. This has a dusty kind of blackened base to it with a really cool toned purple on top. It is like a purple metallic with a little bit of blue shimmer running through it. Very dimensional, really unique color. And this palette is just unreal. Truly a beautiful palette. I'm so happy I still have this in my collection. I don't reach for it near enough, but I have to remedy that for sure. And then next up, let's talk about this Melt Smoke Sessions palette. We know I love this palette. This is one that I could rave about endlessly, I feel like. And this palette has two wee pans in it, which is great. <laughs> I have pan in the shade Granddaddy, which is a dirty golden color. Super unique, grungy gold color. It has like this yellow but greeny kind of quality to it. Overall, it's such a great shade. I have no nothing really else to say other than it's just very grungy and very impactful. And then I have Pan in this shade called Blue Dream, which is a gorgeous minty, slightly sea foam kind of tone. Again, it's a metallic and this is one of those very like chunky kind of metallic, flaky metallic kind of formulas. So it is a little bit more difficult in application. Uh, it doesn't go on just super effortlessly, but it has amazing impact and shine and dimension when you do apply it to the lids. And it is in part because of that flaky texture. This palette is so great. One of my favorites in my collection. I love that Melt does these like dual kind of color stories. There's something about them that's so compelling to me when I see them laid out like this. And I, I love this palette. I wanna hit pan on every single one of these shades in due time for sure. And I bet you I will be able to as well. Um, another Juvia's Place palette here as well. This is the Zulu by Juvia's Place. I've had this for many years and this palette has the biggest pans on the planet. Like, are there bigger eyeshadow pans available from any brand? I doubt it because these are just huge. They're like bigger than some blushes. <laughs> I have pan in three of these shades, thankfully, and all three are mattes, which is shocking because mattes always take me so much longer to pan on the metallics. But I have pan on the first shade here, which is a matte true orange. I have pan on the yellow, which is also a just matte true yellow shade. And then I have pan in the purple, which is kind of like a true purple as well, actually. It's, it's a perfect blend of red and blue. And again, it's a matte formula. I'd love to see more pans on this. I am working on trying to hit pan on this shade right here, currently in my Pan Those Eyeshadows Project Pan, but I'd love to pull one of the metallics into that project in the future because these, these two shades specifically are gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I love this palette, I love this selection, and I don't know that me as a consumer now would necessarily pick this up, but I'm happy that me as a consumer in the past did get this because this is all just bright and fun. I just generally don't think that this would be something that would catch my eye now as like something I need to bring into my collection, but I'm happy Past Rebecca liked it enough to want to get it because I'm happy to have the selection still in my hands today. Next up, let's chat about another very colorful palette. This is the Elf and Jay Kissa to the Rescue palette. This was a limited edition collaboration palette between the two, and it was one that I had to pick up at the time, but again, me as a consumer now, I'm not entirely sure that I would be picking it up today. This did come out two years ago, however, or just like a year and a half, approaching two years. It's kind of like your staple rainbow palette, so I'm happy to have it for sure. I only have one itty bitty teeny weeny pan in here. I have a pan in the shade called Millie, which is a matte orange. Um, it is a little bit more of a yellow based orange, I suppose, but on the eyes, it just reads as a true orange. So I'm happy to have that pan. I did hit that in my Pan Those Eyeshadows last year, and I am currently working on another shade from this palette in my Pan Those Eyeshadows this year as well. And lastly for palettes, before we hop into my singles, is my Black Magic Allure palette by Oma Beauty. This was in my Pan Those Eyeshadows project nearing the end of last year, and I was 
was able to hit pan on two shades through that project, just teeny tiny little pans through that project. So I hit pan on the shade Lady of Gold, which is a white gold shade. It has a lot of shift of gold, but it is kind of like a translucent, if not very light white color with that shift to it. And then I also have pan on this kind of earthy, herby, forest green shade. It's a matte and this is called Lush. Overall, I really enjoy this palette and in due time for sure, it will look much more loved than it is at the present moment, but I'm happy to see there's two pans in there anyways. Um, as I was saying, I'm going to talk about my singles next and in this palette here I actually have all of my depotted ColourPop magnetic palettes. So this contains several different ColourPop palettes that I've comprised into one here. I edited them down, got rid of some shades that didn't work for me or that were duplicates. And so this is going to be a little bit more lengthy to chat through because I do have the names of each shade on the back of them but I don't entirely know which palettes any of these came from anymore. I also do have one uh, additional eyeshadow in here as well. This is one I depotted from the ABH Norvina Volume 1 palette. It's the only pan that remained after I depotted that palette, and it's the shade B2, which is a bronzy shade, and it is um, a very rich color, actually, very, very pigmented and hypermetallic color gorgeous shade in my opinion. I have 10 pans in here and so I think what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to grab a smaller magnetic palette and I'm just going to grab those 10 pans so I can talk about them more specifically and also I can see the names. I have tape on the back of each of these with their names written down but that will make it just a little bit easier so I'll be right back. All right, here they are. These are all of the depotted eyeshadows from ColourPop that I currently have pan on. So the first one I have here is called Full Zip, which is a light creamy shade. It is a matte formula, and I believe Full Zip is from the Yes Please palette. I'm probably gonna be wrong about many of my assumptions of where these come from, but I believe that's from the Yes Please palette, which was the original first ever pressed powder shadow palette from ColourPop, and I, loved that palette so much, but I have a few of those shades remaining and that's not the point of today's video in any capacity, but this next shade here is called Champs. I also think that's from the Yes Please palette. It is a light peachy kind of color, again, a matte formula. And then this one right here is more of the orangey sister of Champs there, but very much a similar tone. And this is called Magical, which I believe is from the Dream Street palette. It is maybe a little bit deeper, um, but it reads more as a kind of cantaloupe kind of color. And then I have a pan in this metallic right here. I actually hit pan on this very recently. This is called Twinkle. It is such a stunning metallic shade. It is really, really dimensional, very impactful, but you do have to apply it with your finger because I find it just does not work very well with a brush. It's a little bit too dusty and loose. And that I believe is also from the Dream Street palette. I have pan in this kind of purple, light pink, kind of shifty shade. It's not a duochrome by any means, but I think depending on the context that you wear that shade, it can look a little bit more purple, a little bit more pink. It's called Yabish, and I believe it was from the Pretty Much, which was a six pan palette. This next one is, um, this one's Spark, I think. Yeah, this one's called Spark, which is a matte red shade. It is a very true red. In fact, it might have just a touch of white so that it reads a little bit pink depending on the context, but it's pretty much a primary red. And then beside it, I have the teensiest, weensiest little pan in the shade Spoiled, which was from the Yes Please palette. And this is very, very comparable to Spark, but it has a little bit more brown in it, definitely not quite leaning towards terracotta or a brick red, but it has more of a brown base to it, so it does have a little bit more depth to it. And then this one here I think is Mooney. Yeah, Mooney is a soft, light peach kind of color. It is a satin finish versus a metallic. It's a really gorgeous kind of one and done shade if you want something very natural on the lids or you can use it as a highlight on the inner corner, brow bone, really beautiful shade and really easy to work with. I think that one's from the Dream Street palette. And then this one right here is a soft champagne kind of color. This is called Yabish. 
Oh, did I say this one was your fish? This is OTP, my bad, I, I just made that up. And lastly is the shade Shooting Star, which is a great matte transition shade. It has a slight bit of warmth to it, but it can definitely read as cool or warm, depending on how you pair it, it's quite neutral. A great shade to wear in the crease or to wear all over the lids for a very soft yet defined look. These are all of the eyeshadows from all of my ColourPop palettes that currently have pan on them. I would love to remedy this. As you can see, I still have many a pans here from many a palettes and lots of colors versus this is very much quite tonal. I'd love to see more pans in all of these in due time, but these take forever to hit pan on. They take a freaking eternity to hit pan on these palettes. So, or hit pan on these pans. So um, I don't see that being something that's in my immediate future, but possibly I would love to roll these into my pan, those eyeshadows in the near future. And then lastly, from my magnetic singles, this palette has eyeshadows from many, many brands. And I currently only have pan in two of these shades. This is again, something I need to remedy. I need to see more pans happening in this palette in the near future. But for now I have pan in this matte coral shade. This is from ColourPop. I'm not sure that this is still available, but this is the shade Wait For It. It's a beautiful salmon-y kind of coral shade. Really, really one of my favorites actually. I just find that that shade goes with so many different looks. And then the other one I have pan on is really hard to grab. I got it. It was super awkward to reach for in the corner there, but this is the shade Crystalline from Cleona Cosmetics. I had this in like, I think the very first round of my Pan Those Eyeshadows Project Pan. It is again, one of those duochrome purple meets blue shifty shades, very comparable to the one that I have pan on from the Nabla palette as well. But this one I think has more of a blue shift versus a purple shift to it. And it's more of a refined metallic versus having like any sort of uh, glitter or shimmer particles to it. But yes, that is all of the pans in my eyeshadow collection. There are many, lots and lots of pans, which is thrilling, very exciting to see. Makes me feel so good to do this kind of roundup and just like reconnect with my eyeshadow collection and see how well loved it is and to reflect on wanting to love it more as well. So that's everything for today's video. Let me know what eyeshadows you have pan on or maybe what eyeshadows you're working on trying to hit pan on. Which eyeshadows in here should I work on trying to hit pan on next? But yes, that is everything. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.